Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As always, before we start our meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you. That you may retain your self-respect, it is better to displease the people by doing what is right than to temporarily please them by doing what you know is wrong. Thank you very much, Madam City Clerk. Call the 10th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Serta. Excuse. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunis. Here. Manny. Excuse. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Excuse. Wangeman. Here. And that's it. 13 present. Quorum is present. And I should uh, note that Alderman Serta will now be Alderman Smith. She has wed, and we congratulate her on that. So you will be, you will be seeing a change in her nameplate there. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Time to pledge our loyalty to our country. Alderman Meyer, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. The pool of the minutes, President Anna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Next item is the announcement of election for Board of Waterworks Commissioner. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We do have one position available on the Board of Waterworks Commission. Um, and I would encourage members of the public that are interested uh, to submit their letter of interest to me and to send a copy to the Mayor Perez. It's a three-year term. Uh, if there are questions, uh, they can contact uh, Dr Joe Trueblood at the uh, Department of uh, Waterworks uh, or the Mayor's office. And that will, the election will be held on September 17th. Very good. Thank you, President Hanna. Next item on the agenda is public forum. Madam City Clerk. Uh, Delcy Johnson. And Delcy, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor Perez and members of the council. Back in May, when the ambulance issue was discussed, the plan was to hire four paramedics dedicated to staffing two ambulances with a third ambulance on standby. We were told that the fire department was willing to make concessions and that Chief Lestusky would agree to a hiring freeze. Indeed. Now we learn that the city will hire four firemen paramedics. Firemen paramedics receive bonus pay. Your constituents, the city taxpayers, will be paying firemen paramedics more than double what the private sector pays paramedics. And the fire department will have four more firemen with not enough to do. Indeed, per a document passed at the last council meeting, Chief Latusky has been given the pow power to hire up to 54 firemen paramedics. The situation is definitely out of control. And although Alderman Bauck told me that only the ambulance workers will get the bonus pay, I'm sure it won't be long before the firemen's union will demand bonus pay for all hires designated as firemen paramedics. Why hire 54 firemen paramedics when only 24 will be needed? What will be the readiness skills of firemen paramedics who are not regularly assigned to ambulance duty? Would you want your child or husband or wife attended by a fireman paramedic who has not been practicing his paramedic skills for a long period of time to suddenly have to perform some life-saving skill? 
In previous discussions of the tracking of the costs involved with operating the ambulance service, we were told that only the $270,000 cost of the four new paramedics would be considered as the personnel cost of operating the ambulance service. Designating the four new hires as firemen paramedics seems to be a further attempt to hide employee costs. Also, we were told that a total of 18 personnel would be required to operate the ambulances. Now that number has risen to 24. So your constituents will be paying 24 firemen paramedics more than twice what private sector paramedics earn. But for the record, the ambulances will be operating by themselves because employee wages will not be considered as a cost of operating this taxpayer service. Chief Listusky promised dedicated ambulances. So it makes sense that you would have to have dedicated paramedics who cannot serve as firemen when they're on duty as paramedics, even if there's a five alarm fire. And there are plenty of people out there who agree with me. It is interesting to note that Orange Cross staffs six ambulances with a seven on standby with just 32 paramedics. The fire department will need 24 firemen paramedics for two ambulances with a third on standby. You have on your agenda a document to establish a special revenue fund for the ambulance service. The explanation does not reference expenses, but if the fund does not include all expenses, it is much ado about nothing. I serve as a member of the Harbor and Marina Commission. We have a boat facilities fund separate from the marina operation, which tracks revenues and expenses related to the launch ramps and the boat slips on the river. The expenses include all DPW labor, labor, professional services, contractor services, etc., which allows us to know the actual net revenue above expenses for this operation. And that is how the ambulance fund, service fund should be set up. All personnel costs should be included on the expense side of the ledger. Otherwise, it's a total joke. What business would just track revenues and ignore their expenses? Orange Cross has decided to stay in business. They have established a new, easy-to-remember phone number, 451-9111, and are working out a service plan for the rest of the county. I believe a lot of city residents will choose to call Orange Cross rather than the fire department. Sheboygan residents have long memories, and a lot of people are very angry about the council's decision to discontinue their agreement with Orange Cross, and I think they will express their anger by calling Orange Cross instead of the fire department. It is obvious, as suggested by former Alderman Renee Susha in her letter to the editor in Sunday Sheboygan Press, that the ambulance issue needs to be readdressed. And now a word about shared services. The city has expressed an interest in a joint dispatch arrangement, but has at the same time thrown up issues that would make the county less than willing to enter into such an agreement. So one must ask if the council is really sincere in making this happen, or are you only pretending? Perhaps if you'd spent more time discussing the issue, you may have arrived at a better response to the opportunity. Instead, you rushed a decision on another critical mm -hmm. issue. It is your responsibility to cooperate with the county to save tax dollars on services that can be shared, and I hope you will reach an agreement with the county to accomplish shared dispatch. Although the city makes up about 40% of the county's population... Excuse me, Dulcie, would you like the additional minute? Please. Thank you. Although the city makes up about 40% of the county's population, I was interested to learn from a July 17th report to the county board by the county administrator that, the county, that of the county's proposed $45 million budget, just under 30%, or $13.5 million, would be allocated to Sheboygan city taxpayers. It is unfair for city taxpayers to pay 100% of our public protection and 30% of the sheriff's budget for public protection for areas of the county that do not have their own police services. And it is unreasonable to expect the city to pay the entire cost of building a shared dispatch system. The Shared Services Committee needs to discuss alternatives. And it is time for the city and the county to stop playing games and practicing one-upmanship and work toward equitable win-win solutions for the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. Thank you for addressing the council, Ms. Uh, Johnson. The next item on the agenda is, is noted as council role. Uh, <clears throat> I was actually in New York when I called it in, and I had asked that it be mayor council role. Uh, and the reason I wanted this particular item on the agenda is to, to share with you some thoughts uh, about 
how we operate, not to provide a quick lesson in civics or government 101. And I've done this before with the previous council about a year and a half ago, and uh, I thought it was appropriate uh, to, to just talk a little bit and share, share some thoughts with you about our, our roles as we function as, as a common council. The, the role of the mayor uh, is, is somewhat unique because, as you know, our responsibilities are broken down into legislative and executive. Executive being the mayor and legislative being the council. The mayor's uh, role is somewhat unique in that the mayor can function as, in the legislative role when there's a tie. Uh, the mayor can break a tie, therefore have an, have an impact or an effect on legislation. Other than that, the mayor does not do anything legislatively other than propose perhaps resolutions and ordinances and so forth, uh, but it's strictly your responsibility. And I wanted to t talk about this because as I go out in the community, people are holding me accountable for the job that I do, the good job or the bad job that I do. And the job that I do hinges a lot on what you do and how we dovetail together in, in our roles. Um, the council obviously is broken down into five standing committees. Uh, those committees play an important role because they take certain issues that deal with certain uh, uh, concerns, takes them away, deliberates, brings back recommendations, and then the full council has the privilege of deliberating again and making decisions permanently. Uh, in that respect, the council uh, recommends that the standing committees recommend policy to the council. Uh, and also a very interesting uh, uh, authority or power that standing committees have is by a majority vote, they can actually issue directives like the mayor can. As, with, as a majority, you can direct a department head or the mayor or the city attorney or the city clerk to actually do something. That would be almost executive to, in, in, in that sense uh, function. And all that is important because as you, as you look at the big picture, we want to make sure that I am able to do my job and I need your help to do my job so that there is no, and I, I hate to use this word, but for lack of a better term, there is no micromanagement. The management comes again in the form of a majority vote in the standing committee or majority vote in, in the council. And as, as we work our way through the roles, uh, I've been an alderman for several years before I became mayor, now I'm mayor two and a half years. But I look at what we do as aldermen and what I do as mayor. One of the things that we do is, is, to, is to be reactive. Okay? Now, what in the world do I mean by being reactive? There's a problem. Our constituents express their concerns. We didn't know about the problem. We react. We address it. We correct it. We do that in the form of a directive. It's required. And we do that in the form of an ordinance, perhaps. We're passing a, a policy. A good example of this would be uh, the uh, intersection of Fifth and New York, where we've had for many, many years a problem, water rushing down, not being able to be drained properly, and it floods back up, and people have a swamp in their basements. Uh, that is a reaction. We are reacting to that because people are having problems, and that's our job, quite frankly. That's, that's what we do. We react. The other thing that we do is, is proactive. We take the initiative. A good example of that is this Clean City Initiative. Uh, we understood, I believe, that we have a situation in Sheboygan where people do not want to look out their window and be looking at garbage or anything that's not clean. So we took a proactive approach and said, we're going to initiate a clean city initiative and take care of the problem before it really becomes a problem. So we, we've done reactive and proactive. The other thing that we do is we're visionaries. And I think this, the uh, good example of that is 7th and 9th Street uh, opening of two ways, the reopening of Niagara for, for development is rather visionary because what it's going to do is create an, a tremendous amount of excitement in that area, perhaps even generate a new clientele for the neighboring businesses that are there, including Yonkers. So that's visionary. As we do all our development, all that is visionary. And we accomplish that doing the same thing that we do and that we do well as policy and ordinances and so forth. Another good example of uh, vision is establishing TIS and industrial parks. We, we, we look towards the future. What is it that we can do to make our quality of life better, to make our community grow and stay up to par with technology and so forth? So we create TIS for that. We, we encourage development. We provide incentives to developers to create development. Industrial parks do the same thing. 
So again, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of establishing policy, passing ordinances, and issuing directives. The other thing I wanted to discuss with you is, as we fulfill our roles, I, I really believe all of us have a, a clear vision of, of what our goals are. I would like to see us all come together in one special meeting, and I'll use an example that we, uh, we had at school district. Uh, Alderman Hanna, President Hanna, and myself were, were school board members, and every year the school board would come together and have a meeting and establish priorities and goals and objectives. We would list. Everybody would contribute, and then we'd pick out the most important and the least important, and then by consensus agree on five or ten or whatever, and then the things that we did, visionary-wise, not reactive and, and proactive, we would work towards those goals and that vision. And I, I think that is important that we do this around this time because now it's budget time. So as we move towards, our, towards putting together our budgets, we should have in our mind what exactly is important to us, what is, what is important to your constituents. And the key thing here is that every one of you, well, eight of you, because there's 16 in eight district, two for the, each, uh, each uh, district, well, your constituents are going to tell you, this is so what's important to me, and this is what's important to me. In another district, District 1 may be different than District 2, District 3, et cetera. But what I think we, sh we need to do is bring it all together and say what's important to the whole community in general. Because as I've said before, when you vote, you may impact your district and be voting in the best interest of your district. But that vote, as a majority, impacts the entire city of Sheboygan. So I'd like to do that, and it would be in the form of a special meeting, and along with that, uh, so that we can clarify the purpose of a team, Alderman Bauk has gracefully, uh, graciously agreed to, to work with me and our department heads and the Common Council to put together a, a program on and how we can best utilize our resources and, and the abilities and the talents and the skills that everyone has so we can work towards that common goal that we will establish in the goals and objectives. Alderman Bauk and I have a meeting next Tuesday, August 28th, and we'll discuss the specifics, and we will put a program together. Now, this is a program that will be on a volunteer basis for you. It's not going to be required. It's going to be a special meeting. You're welcome to attend. If you don't, if there's no quorum, we can't have it, and that's the only way we can do it. Uh, obviously, there will be, it will be posted. It will be no, there will be notice. Uh, the public is welcome to attend. At the school district, I, I believe we posted them, but no one showed up, just the school board members. But it's, Alderman <laughs> President Hannah smiling. But again, it, it's important that, that we keep in mind our roles, going back, our roles as legislators and executives, and that we think about what is important to us, what are our priorities, what do our constituents want us to, to, to perform and conduct on their behalf, and then we all bring it together and say, this is the big picture, this is what we're all looking at, so let's work to, towards that and accomplish. At the end of the year, I think all of us should be able to say, we had five objectives, we met all five, or we met four. But at least we were very specific about what we wanted to do. The rest of the things we're going to do, again, it's going to be reactive. Some of are going to be pre proactive. And that's just the way business go, because I believe, as Alderman Wagaman said a long time ago when I was an alderman, being a councilman is about gutters and streets and trees and leaves and all that. And that's what we do. We, we react uh, reactively again, uh, on, on, on that note, too. So again, I appreciate your, uh, your listening to me, and we'll move on. Next item on the agenda. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't do this yet. You're going to have to give me another two minutes or so. I took, I wanted to share these things with you because they're very important. And I did this during the staff meeting. But I, was at, I took a vacation and I went to New York. Now, what it does, it helps you reflect back on what you have in Sheboygan and compare it to New York and say, wow, do we have it better or not? Uh, Alderman Hanna has lived in New York, so obviously he can relate to, to some of these. Alderman Kittleson has visited New York, and I'm sure many of you have too. But some of these things are, are humorous, but they're true. For example, as we're driving, all of a sudden somebody decides to park in the middle of the street. There's a car here, going that way, and one going. They decide they're going to park in the middle of the street, go inside their house and wait 10 minutes, whatever they're going to do. You have to sit there and wait, or manage to squeeze by, and if you can, you back up and do whatever you need. I think this would probably drive Chief Kirk nuts, to have all these police officers handling these tickets. But that's what they do in New York. The other thing they have in New York is garbage police. They actually go and check your garbage to see if you're putting something in there that's not supposed to be in there, and they ticket you if you did. And they check that pretty, pretty aggressively. 
The other interesting thing that I noted, and these again are first uh, impressions and observations, is dumpsters. Here, uh, Steve Sokolowski would go nuts because here, when we do development, dumpsters have to be properly enclosed. There's got to be a gate. There's got to be a little uh, pavement or something like that. Well, there, pick a spot. Put it anywhere you want to. And normally, they put them in front of the door, the front door. So that's where you see dumpsters. And people walk by and throw stuff in there. So that, to me, just drives you nuts, too. And then, again, Paulette would be, uh, this would drive Paulette nuts, is buildings. Okay? They build a building right next to each other. And if that doesn't work, butt it up against it. If that doesn't work, put it on top. If that doesn't work, pick a spot. Put it anywhere you want. That's how they do it. And it's very interesting that you see very little narrow alleys, very narrow driveways where you have a foot on each side of your car just barely making it, and the garage happens to be at an angle. So it, it's, it's uh, very interesting how you do that. They have no, no backyards. There's a $1,000 fine for anyone that does not pick up after their dogs. $1,000 fines, and they have signs all over the place. Uh, parking, there is none, very little. Uh, you have to walk. You better not walk, so you're going to pay $11 for the first half hour of parking. Most people drive uh, 50 miles one way to the supermarket because there's not a big supermarket there. So here we can walk or take the bus. And speaking of bus, they have no bus. It's subway. New York was the only place that I've seen that has a traffic light in the middle of the street with no intersection. I dig that. I think they would drive Bill Bulky nuts. But somebody decided they're going to put a traffic light in the middle of the street and there's no intersection. And you see these cars speed and all of a sudden everybody stops and everybody's wondering what's going on. The other thing that was interesting is they have a firebase ambulance. Chief Lustusky would like this. They have a firebase ambulance, but they do have another ambulance provider, which is a volunteer ambulance provider. If you can drive a truck, pick somebody up, come on, you're volunteering. That's the way it works over there. Interestingly, the park. Everybody knows how I feel about parks. Central Park, we visited Central Park. It had 850 acres, 25 million per year visited. There were only 25 crimes reported last year. So it's one per million. And it's not run by the city. It's run by a trust fund. And they're able to meet their budget and uh, take care of the park. And then last, uh, last of all, and certainly not the least, least, City Hall and the mayor are not accessible. It's impossible to call the mayor and get the mayor on the phone, unlike Sheboygan. And not only is City Hall not accessible, it's guarded. So imagine the mayor trying that in Sheboygan. He better not run again for office. We have accessibility in City Hall. So little tidbits, I wanted to share that. We will move on. Thank you very much for indulging. Let me indulge. President Hanna. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <clears throat> Hearing. For the vacation and discontinuous of a portion of North 26th Street adjacent to lots 3 and 4, Smith Garden Subdivision, First National Bank of Manitowoc, is there anyone here that would like to address the council on the hearing? Is there anyone here? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion is second to close hearing. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda items 1, 10 1 through 1026. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and that all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd ask that uh, item number 1025 be pulled out for a separate vote. 1025 has been requested to put uh, pull forward for a separate vote. It's an RC by Public Works recommending filing documents submitted in communication from the Director of Social <laughs> Services of the Salvation Army, Sheboygan, given notice of their termination of the lease agreement with the city and accepting the termination of the agreement. And I believe, Alderman Clayunas, you will abstain. Yes, I will. Any... Uh, Problem with that? And I need a motion to uh, to accept uh, and, ad and adopt the report committee. I would uh, make a motion, Mr. Mayor, to accept and adopt <clears throat> RC 1025. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Epstein. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. 
Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I need to pull uh, item number 1023 and make an amendment to it. 1023, please do so. Um, I'm going to quick read it so that, that the public knows what we're amending. It's an RC by Pu Public Protection and Safety recommending filing documents submitting a communication from IAFF Local 483 and MDA asking permission to have a fill the boot campaign on Friday, August 24, 2007. Uh, it will be on various street corners to collect donations from children and adults in the community suffering from a neuromuscular disease and granting said permission with various caveats. What I need to do is amend it to delete uh, Friday, August 24th, 2007. And I'll, I'll make a motion. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Motion and second. And Continue. And the reason why I'm amending that is because of a, a rain date. They didn't want to be stuck to a certain date. They're looking at uh, August 31st, 07, or the rain date, 9107. And just so the aldermen know, uh, as part of our caveats, you have a letter on your desk that, uh, that relates to the insurance that we have asked them about. OK. Thank you. There is a motion to amend, as stated. A second. Any, any discussion, further discussion on the amendment? There being none on the amendment, please call the roll. You want to do the, that can be an all eyes on the amendment. Like all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now I need a motion to. I'll make a motion to accept and adopt the RC as amended. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Falk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Bourne? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Now we will act on all 10 1 through 10 26, except in 10 23 and 10 25, which have been acted on. Is there any discussion on those items? There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bulk? 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1027. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to file 1027. Second. Motion and second to file 1027. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Ooh. Alderman Rinfleisch votes no. Motion carries. Report of officers two. 1028 to 1040 uh, to be referred, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. On agenda item number 1029, and I move to file. This is a federal issue, and I urge them to seriously discuss this and take some action in Washington. Second. Motion and second to file 1029. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. <clears throat> The only thing I want to say about this uh, is that, and for the people watching on television that don't have a copy of this, has to do with uh, uh, illegal aliens in Sheboygan County and having all forms of all parts of government do something about this problem of illegal aliens. We've had uh, two illegal aliens, I believe, in the last year, year, year and a half, that were involved in fatal traffic accidents that turned out to be hit and runs. We had one on South Business Drive where apparently the alleged perpetrator has left the area and has been able, the uh, police have not been able to find the subject. And also we had uh, another incident uh, within the last week where a young man from Port Washington was killed by, a, uh, by an individual who allegedly is an illegal alien and also possibly had uh, various addresses, Plymouth, Sockville, and Sheboygan, and that's also another hit and run. And apparently there's some concern that that individual is also heading out of the area and possibly back to Mexico. So uh, I agree that uh, the, the state, the federal, and even the local government has to do something about this problem because it's definitely uh, reared its ugly head in this area. Thank you. Any further discussion? I will add that hit and runs can be committed by anybody. Not necessarily illegal or legal. All in favor of filing, please say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The rest will be referred. 1028 to 1040 will be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 1041 by Alderman Hanna, awarding the sale of $8 million general obligation corporate purpose bonds, series 2007B. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that you invite uh, Carol Worth from RBC to, to come forward and speak to the council. Thank you, President Hanna. Carol, would you please come up? Good evening. Okay. Put as close as you can to you. Good. Okay, thank you. All right, tonight I have um, on your desk, you will have uh, um, a handout that has also attached to it a final resolution that you will be considering tonight. Um, you did have a copy, a draft copy of the resolution earlier. The resolution that you have before you tonight incorporates the sale results, and I have my report that is a summary of those sale results, so I will spend the time walking through the summary with you. Everything in the summary is incorporated into the resolution for your action. So starting with the, um, the front page of this um, sale results, I have a one page that pretty much tells you the whole story, and then we have the exhibits attached to it. And again, the exhibits are actual exhibits of the resolution. We start with the fact that we um, serve as your financial advisor, and we took bids for you on an $8 million general obligation bonds this morning um, at 10 o'clock and it's done It's called a competitive sale. Um, we distribute information nationwide, and then we request bids to be submitted on the bond issue at a time specific. We do that with the official statement, uh, which is a very large document that describes the city. And we also request a bond rating from Moody's Investor Service and Standard & Poor's. And with that information, uh, the investors and the underwriters make a decision if they want to bid on your bonds. We start with the fact that Moody's has reconfirmed the city's AA3 credit rating. And we also have a reconfirmation of Standard & Poor's AA rating for the city. And you remember the last time I was here, the AA rating was actually an upgrade from the AA minus. As a AA minus, we would have been rated at the same rating base as a AA3 from Moody's. Moody's uses letters and Standard & Poor's uses the minus and the plus. So actually right now we're just a little bit ahead with Standard & Poor's over, over Moody's, but we're working on it. Uh, the bonds themselves, they're issued to pay the cost of your new um, police facility. The sale results, we received bids from four different firms, and again that does not mean that just four firms across the country were interested, but we have uh, four account managers that submitted bids, and that is on the second page of my handout. It's called the bid tabulation. You will see that the winning bid came from LaSalle Financial Services in New York. The true interest rate was a 4.817%. And in the center there is the net interest cost, which is over the 20-year life of the bond issue. There were also three other bids you can see there from um, Robert Paird, A.G. Edwards, and UBS. And you'll notice that the managers were from various states. So we had quite a um, uh, distribution of interest uh, in your issue. And you can see there the true interest rates ranged from the 481 to a 495. The next page is the actual bid form. And again, this is part of the resolution. It's called Exhibit A3. This is the form that the winning bidder submits that has the interest rates inserted. And also at the bottom, left-hand corner, it again shows you the interest cost. They are actually paying you a small premium of 8169 to get the net interest cost of that $5,410,000 that you've seen on the previous page. And again, the true interest rate of the 4.817. So now we take those interest rates that are on this page and we put them on the next page, which produces the repayment schedule or the amortization schedule for this issue. So your principal is paid on October 1 from 09 through 26. And statutorily, this is as long as this issue can go out. Uh, the coupon means interest rate, and those are taken right off of the bid form. And then you pay interest semi-annually. So that's where the interest column comes. 
The far right hand side, you see fiscal total. That is your annual tax levy for this issue. All of these numbers are now included in the resolution. In the body of the resolution, it'll show you all of this detail. So, um, so again, this is just for the sake of summarizing it and to let you know where the information can be found. Um, the city will receive the money on September 5th. It will deposit this into a construction fund. There is no limit in terms of the investment income that can be realized or the rate of investment. However, the city is subject to, because this is tax-exempt bonds, the money must be spent in two years. So it's called a federal two-year spend-down rule. So all the money, which includes investment income, must be spent in two years. That allows you to keep the investment profit. Uh, now, uh, just to let you know what's been going on in the markets, um, I always keep the um, Finance Committee apprised of uh, interest rates. And back on August 6th, we did a very comprehensive report that used the market on August 6th. And we prepared an amortization schedule for this bond issue. And back then, that true interest cost, or true interest rate, I should say, was a 4.56%. Today, that number is a 4.81%. And that is definitely attributable to a great deal of volatility that is currently in the markets. You may have heard that yourself. If you have any interest in the markets with regard to mortgages, with regard to stocks, with regard to any form of financial markets, uh, not only nationally but internationally, um, it would take me um, a long time to try and explain all the factors that are going on. So I have included in here an article in the back, a very good piece that just came out today that you can review. But basically what is happening as it starts that article is that there is what is called a flight to quality. The city of Sheboygan has very high quality bonds. You have two AA category ratings. Even with the two AA category ratings, there has been a difference of a quarter of a percent move in the market in one week. Now, the good news is that the city has sold 20-year bonds at a 4.81%. We have gotten used to seeing the very, very low interest rates over the last four or five years, and we now look at a 4.81% and we're a little taken back by it. If you look at traditionally long-term 20-year bonds, you would say five, five and a half percent was an average interest rate. So we're still looking at a very attractive 481 uh, interest rate. Sure, we would have loved to enjoy the 456, but realistically, a 481 over 20 years is an extremely good interest rate. So um, what is happening here is that those municipalities, issuers that don't enjoy this type of a good quality credit rating, are to the point where they cannot enter the bond market. The investors are not there for them at all. So um, we are still very fortunate as a high-rated city. We have good market access, as you can see, by the type of bids we receive from all over the country. So you know we're in good shape here today. Um, but I just wanted you to see this article because it really goes into what's happened with regard to the Federal Reserve last, last week coming in and cutting that, um, uh, that borrowing rate. Uh, for banks, uh, the speculation of what's going to happen to the Fed meeting in September. Uh, there's going to be a lot of volatility continuing in the marketplace for, I would say, the next month and a half, uh, maybe even longer, but this is not going to be resolved in a week or so. Um, so I think that in that, in that regard, um, we are still enjoying a very, very attractive interest rate for our city. Any questions for Carol? Otherwise, a motion is in order. President Hanna. Thank you, Carol. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make the motion that we award the sale of the $8 million general obligation corporate um, <clears throat> uh, purpose bonds series 2007 B. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. We would, we've had it explained. There is none. Please call the roll. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Vanderweel, Wangeman, Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Gesha. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman <laughs> Gesha uh, 
made a real good suggestion and said, let's show the public and the people here in the council what after all these years our police station is going to look like. And folks, here's the floor plan. Beautiful, modern police station. Take a couple of minutes to sign, and I will uh, say that the next week, sometime I believe on Thursday, is that correct, David? There will be a formal groundbreaking with the bulldozers and all that. And I know Chief Kirk thinks I'm kidding, but he and I are going to start the first bulldozer and dig that ground together. Okay? So the plans are being made, everyone. There will be invitations extended. Thursday, next Thursday, and this one. Sixth, it'd be done. Thank you, Carol. Have a good night. All right, thank you, Chief Kirk. You want to say a few words? I just wish uh, to say thank you to the Common Council, to the Mayor. Uh, to all those who have put effort into this, um, this is a long time in coming. As I've said many, many, many times before, when I started here in 1977, and I believe Alderman Wangeman even says it earlier than that, Chief Frank in 1977 said, don't worry, son, or, or I forget the exact word, but I believe he said, son, don't worry, we're going to build you a new uh, police facility. Well, I use that line now, and I want to say thank you uh, very, very much. Um, we knew that this was coming, we just didn't know when, and with the action here tonight, um, it was exciting, and I'm very happy that we're proceeding with this, not only for our citizens, but also for the employees that I work with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next item, 1042 by Alderman Ryan, authorizing the mayor to file applications for financial assistance from the state of Wisconsin Department of Tourism. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move for suspension of the rules. Is there a second to that? Second. Second. Any objection? Alderman Rinslice. Uh, Alderman Rinslice. Uh, as usual, thank you, for, Mr. Mayor. I'm um, just looking for an explanation of the reason for suspension. Thank you. Very good. The reason uh, to suspend the rules, basically, this is an application for co-op funding from the uh, State Department of Tourism. Our application is in. However, if the council does not approve this, we cannot get our hands on this uh, return of some of our state tax money to, uh, to ourselves. Any further discussion required? Okay. You made a motion. There was a second. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I need a resolution to put the motion to put the resolution upon its passage. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. If I may explain this, Your Honor. Um, Please. Basically, this is uh, uh, $20,000 for three different events, totaling close to $60,000 for uh, uh, state uh, uh, tourism co op money. Uh, are eligible for, and that uh, we might as well apply. Absolutely. Thank you, Alman Ryan, and I would like to uh, extend my heartfelt thanks to Kim. She has done a tremendous job with the tourism division, and this is just one part of her great work that she does for the city. Kim, thank you very much. <laughs> there is a motion and second to put Resolution 1042 upon its passage. Please call the roll. Heidemann. Kittleson, Clayunis, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1043 through 1047 lies over. 1048 through 1051 to be referred. Report of Committee 7. 1052, an RC by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7570, 
Based on the applicant's record of violations related to the license activity, the applicant's status as a repeat law violator, and the applicant's failure to reveal all violations. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion? Under discussion is uh, Juan D. Coronado here tonight. He's not here, Your Honor. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Coronado uh, met before our committee in closed session uh, last Tuesday night, and it was a recommendation of uh, unan unanimous recommendation of the committee to uh, deny his beverage operator's license for for the uh, reasons that you have just just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clay Aye. Meyer. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 1053 through 1055 lies over. To be referred 1056 through 1061. Matters laid over 11, 826, and RO, RO number 2120708 oh, by the City Plan Commission recommending vacating a portion of North 26th Street adjacent to lots 3 and 4, Smith Gardens Subdivision, First National Bank of Manitowoc. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the RO be accepted and filed and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There's none. Please call the roll. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. <clears throat> excuse me. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 922. Please note that we will hold for 948. 942, resolution number 750708 by Alderman Montemayor, accepting the deed from FNB Sheboygan LLC, dedicating certain described property for use as city street right away. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. <clears throat> Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Vanderweel, Aye. Wankaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Clayunis. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 945, resolution number 760708 by Alderman Boren, Bauk, Gisha, and Clayunis, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, uh, establish appropriations of 300000 for the ambulance services in the general fund. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, Your Honor, uh, I want to reiterate that I uh, do not support the fire department taking over the ambulance service. I do support this document, however, because it sets up a special revenue fund to track expenses, expenses for the ambulance business separate from the fire department budget. This is currently the best option for the council to take to uh, track these expenses, and that's why I'm supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I, concur. Mm -hmm. I concur with Alderman Boren, and my reason for supporting this is because of the word special. The word special to, means, to me means separate. And it's the best we can do here is to separate and to keep as clear as we can the picture of the ambulance service. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Clayness. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just have a question for older persons born in Clayness. Is this not the same document that came in um, a few weeks ago and you voted against it? I guess I'm just not clear as to why you voted against it the first time and now you brought it back in. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Uh, Vice President Boren, response? Uh, thank you, Alderperson uh, Meyer. 
Uh, it was a mistake uh, on my part uh, in reading over the document. I had a misunderstanding, and that's why it's back. And this time, I want to support it. Thank you. Owen Meyer, answer your question? Yes, thank, thank you. Owen Gisha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in follow-up to Alderman Bourne and Clyunas, they've been working very diligently with the Finance Committee in helping craft this to make sure it does just as some of our uh, public speakers tonight in the past have asked for, it was in fact done in just that manner, thanks to the help of the fin entire Finance Committee and uh, the uh, input from both uh, Jim and Gene. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Uh, Alderman Wagaman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Much as uh, Alderman Bourne originally, I did not support the uh, fire department taking over the ambulance service. And I've always worried about uh, how are we going to keep track of whether this thing is really is profitable or is not profitable. And I, I think this document will accomplish that. And so I would uh, also support this document this time. Thank you, Alderman Wangerman. Any further discussion? On 945, Motion to put resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 946, resolution number 770708 by Alderman Boren, Bauk, Gisha, and Clionis authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget established appropriations for the purchase of three ambulances. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm also supporting this document because it does establish the, uh, the uh, ambulance uh, uh, services fund uh, that we will be able to attract the expenses of the ambulance, whether we end up purchasing ambulances or whether we end up leasing ambulances uh, yet to be determined. Uh, in the event that it does uh, end up to be a purchase of ambulance, uh, as co-chair of finance, I have requested an agenda item for the next finance committee meeting on August 27th to set up a repayment schedule for the $540,000 advance from the motor vehicle fund plus interest. And this, this is the key to this document, and I, I thank my fellow finance committee, member, finance committee members for setting up this repayment with interest. Uh, and this, this repayment will take place uh, in no greater than uh, seven years. The $540,000 will have to be paid back to the Motor Vehicle Fund with interest. I also should point out, however, that this will be an additional it, at a minimum, $77,000 plus dollars, it will be an annual strain on the supposed profitability of the ambulance business that I don't believe was in the original projections. But uh, I am going to support this because it does contain this uh, repayment of the uh, advance from the uh, Motor Vehicle Fund. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, I originally pressed the button for something else, but as a clarification, the lease amount of roughly $78,000 annually with an annual payment made from the profits from the ambulance service was in the original budget and was in the final passage of that budget. So those dollars are already accounted for with the accounting of that project. Second, uh, it is possible, just so that people understand, that we could advance the money out of the vehicle fund to pay for the ambulances and then still lease the vehicles and pay the money back into the motor vehicle fund. Uh, that was also discussed in finance. So I want to make sure everybody understands there's a lot of different options. We can pull it out temporarily until we get our lease documents in place or as, as Alderman Bourne uh, uh, worked on diligently with this, uh, uh, with the finance committee and his suggestion regarding amortizing the thing back. So there's a lot of functions. We may to, with the help of our finance department, pay it out, pay it back, move it around. So if you see money coming out of the motor vehicle fund, it may just be for temporary. It's a fair question to ask. You know, why is it coming out? Is it going to go back in or what your final intent are? So there could be a couple other movements with this to be used as a tool here. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Alderman Oak. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd invite Alderman Gisha to give a quick explanation about uh, purchasing versus lease and what the timetable and process for that is. Uh, Thank you, Alderman Bauk. 
Paul Magesha, one minute. Okay, yeah, or less. Uh, <laughs> The amortization schedule is will be virtually the same if we purchase it out of the motor vehicle fund and pay it back as with a lease. Uh, basically, with a lease, you make payments, in this case, for seven years. At the end of that seven years, you pay a dollar, you own the equipment. During that time period, you have, a, you have all the, the, the great stuff about uh, brand new equipment and it's all under warranty and, and yada, yada, yada. The uh, idea with the le lease is it's a pay-as-you-go program. There'll be an annual payment, theoretically, in our discussions that would be made at the end of your fiscal year of the operation, taking those profits out, paying the, uh, your annual payment, so that the service is paying for the equipment. You're matching sources and uses of funds. So it's a way for the city not have to go into debt uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a negative way, but using actual uh, generated funds to pay for an actual operation. So, I talk a lot about in the committee about sources and uses of funds, and this would be a perfect example of that. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Do we know what model of uh, vehicle we're going to purchase? Is that known at this time? Uh, Alderman Gisha? I guess it's me. Uh, I seem to be Mr. Ambulance tonight. I invite the chief to come up, but there was a presentation at this, at this, to this body that talked about we asked them to come do three three uh, um, quotations from three different vendors. They actually brought us four from four different vendors, with the price of each ambulance being t oh, less, more than $10,000 less per ambulance than was originally quoted in their proposal. So that was all done. But as far as what they are, I'll let the chief perhaps uh, best explain your, your purchase guys. And here tonight, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Sharp. But if you can help with that, you'll know more about it than I. Chief, would you please come up? Thank you, Your Honor, members of council. Um, the council made a determination in a previous vote and a previous document the type of ambulances are med tech ambulances. It's a subsidiary of Pierce Manufacturing Company. And I believe the funding portion and the transfer of uh, accounts here is, is not approving the purchase of those specific ambulances, but putting that into the appropriate accounting process. Oh, hold on, Chief. Alderman Clayton, this question for Chief. Yes, Chief, um, are these ambulances the same size as Orange Cross uses? Uh, I'm not certain. They're probably, there's a, there are different chassis than Orange Cross is using. If the question is, are they going to fit in the hospitals, right. the That's answer is yes. We've had vehicles there. We've moved them through and checked sizes and everything else. Yeah, that was an important question someone asked, a friend of mine asked, if um, not connected to Orange Cross. But someone asked, said that they had heard that these ambulances would not fit into a memorial's emergency area. We had a uh, um, demonstrator model of the type that we were ordering, and we had at Memorial Hospital, ran it through. It's, it's close, but it, you know, it, it'll fit Thank you. in the existing configuration. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kleinus. Thank you, Chief Lestusky. <clears throat> okay. Resolution number 946, establishing appropriations for the three ambulances. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinus? No. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries 947, resolution number 7807-08 by Alderman Boren, Bauk, Gisha, and Clayunas, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establish appropriations for funds raised by International Committee. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. <coughs> there being none, please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 948, and we will take 922 with this that we just held. 948, resolution number 790708 by Alderman Hannah, Boren, Clionis. Gisha and Bauk authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the construction of a new police station. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to accept and file RO 922. 
and then uh, and then put <clears throat> put 948 resolution 790708 upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, Alderman Wangman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as Chief Kirk alluded to, this process has been going on for a long time. 1963, I joined the department, and Chief Heinke at that time said, young man, we're going to build you a new police station. That was 44 years ago. So you think after waiting 44 years, I'd be pretty happy about all this. I've got deep reservations about the entire process. It's my opinion we're building the wrong building in the wrong place at the wrong time and for the wrong amount of money. I think we've been penny wise and dollar foolish, and I think we're gonna pay for it down the road. 20 years from now, we're gonna be looking at doing a vast remodeling. We're gonna end up paying for two lesser priced police stations instead of one high quality police station. Even uh, amongst the business community in Sheboygan, I've talked to many people, and they're dismayed by this whole process. When our city is growing to the south, we build a police station on the north. Police stations are supposed to be located toward the center of activity. So this was a mistake. I think the building, although it's going to be adequate and it's going to be better, uh, I think most of the members of the police department at this point would take an army tent if we gave it to them because uh, they're tired of the whole process and they want to get moving and they want to get it along. And so on a night when I should be happy, I'm not. But I'm going to support these documents because no police station is you know, far less preferable than the one they've got now. So I, but it's with uh, deep reservation that I'm voting for this. I think the one thing that we did do on this whole process that was very good was that we uh, hired a local contractor. The Quashes company is very well known. Uh, they have a high standard of quality and I'm sure they'll do the very best they can with the money they have. And they will, of course, uh, have to work within the budget. And I'm, I'm very pleased that we did hire a local firm because it gives us uh, our local people jobs and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's with mixed emotions that uh, I'm supporting this document, but uh, it's not a happy night for me. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, as being one of the new guys here, on the block, uh, we didn't go through the wars that it took to get to this point. Uh, whether it's the, the chief uh, and, and his folks uh, or a lot of these council members, not me, who had to go through the blood, sweat, and tears to get to this point, I would just like to uh, congratulate them on their efforts to get to uh, this resolution for the city. Um, and I, I have deep respect for Alderperson Wangaman and his, his history with the department and with the city, uh, although I take a little exception with penny wise, pound foolish. Because we're not building an $8 million police station, we have to remember this. We're building a $13,419,057.29 police station. Interest of a quarter of a million dollars a year is also being expended on top of the original dollar amount of $8 million. When Albert Einstein was in his later years and he was teaching, he was sitting on a stage all by himself. And students asked him a question. They said, uh, Mr. Einstein, what is the most powerful force in the universe? And Einstein puffed on his pipe and said, compound interest. Mm -hmm. And we are paying 5 million, almost $5.5 million in compound interest. I've built buildings all over the state with, or financed and helped with these buildings. I've never found an $8 million building to be penny wise and pound foolish. It's a substantial investment of $13 plus million from the taxpayers of this city. And I think it's a great building. I think it's been a compromise in a lot of ways, a compromise that I didn't have a lot to do with, but a lot of people in this room did. And I think penny wise and pound foolish, when your citizens are writing a check for $13 million, may be overstating it just a bit. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just think that the citizens of Sheboygan, along with our professional police department, will have a new police station to be very, very proud of. I think there's always compromise. And I think out of compromise, uh, we're going to bring forward a highly functional and a very desirable police station. 
Thank you, President Hanna. And I, I guess I want to key in here. Uh, I, I appreciate your comments, Alderman Wagaman, but you have been gone for a few years. And during those years, a n big number of meetings were held. Uh, the police department was involved, police personnel was involved, building use committee was involved, uh, certain aldermen were involved, I was involved, a lot of people were involved, the architect uh, was involved. Just a huge number of people were involved. And what we had in mind is to build a badly needed police station for our police department for the people of Sheboygan and do it in a manner that was affordable and it appropriate for the police department. And to characterize that in a manner that you have characterized it does not give it full justice. And I, I wish you hadn't done that, but you have. The people of Sheboygan has, have asked us, as Alderman Gish has said, build a police station. We need one. The police department needs one. But build it in a manner that's affordable and appropriate. And we, not only did we do that, but we, do it, we did it in a way that allows for growth and expansion of that police station. Now, if you look, if you think back in the 50 by 50 slogan, and you should remember this because you're the city historian, 50 by 50 was a slogan that people were talking about in 1948, give or take a year. What that meant was they wanted Sheboygan to have 50,000 people by the year 1950. You know how long it's been and we only have 2,000 people more and we've lost them already? And that police station handled the load. Now we've got a police station that has not only twice as much space, 60,000 square feet, but indoor parking. Chief has a beautiful office. I don't know, I may want to move in there myself. But we've got great space, great use of space, wisely designed use of space, wisely designed uh, future thinking of expansion. So again, please forgive me for belaboring the point. For you to characterize it in the manner that you did does not do it any justice to this council, to the police department, and to the people of Sheboygan. Chief, would you like to say something? As I stated, I've been here since 1977. This has been a dream of many, many employees to build a new police department. The word compromise was uh, stated here tonight, and this is absolutely a compromise. We did three needs assessments. There were 68,000, 80, and 80,000. We came in with a smaller building and then what the needs assessment indicated. It's a compromise. We understand that there is a concern for funds. We understand, and we've have pushed for years for a need of a new police department. This will deal with the concerns, many concerns that we have addressed throughout the years to an assortment of common councils. There were years when I first began that we would take each common council member through the police department to show them the need and the urgent need for a new police department. That concern or that need to give tours stopped several years back when the Common Council took it serious. This is a compromise. I say thank you once again because it will deal with some of the concerns of the citizens. It will deal with some of the concerns of my officers. Is it smaller than what I had thought? Yes, it is. Is it a compromise? Yes, it is. Are we thankful? Yes, I believe we are. Do we wish we could have everything that was, was uh, dreamt of? Well, sure. When you build a house, you dream all sorts of dreams. And I just say thank you here tonight for the action you've taken. I say thank you, and I want to get started on this. And as the mayor stated, I will be driving that bulldozer. That's what you... <laughs> you and I. Thank you, Chief. We have a couple of more, and then we'll take the vote. Alderman Ryan, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, compromise is the key word here. Um, truthfully, I was... Uh, um, against the smaller version of the police department, the, the lower budget version of the police department. Um, there were a lot of compromises. Uh, there was, it was somewhat downsized, um, but it's being built, and that's the important part. Uh, if you would have, a year ago, I didn't think it would ever be built, to tell you the truth. I'm not too crazy about the location. I believed it belonged to, closer to the south side of town, but that's all part of the compromise. Police department's being built. 
and uh, our police our police department deserves it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Wagaman. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. With all due respect to you and to my fellow council members, my comments here tonight will not be judged by you or this council here this evening. They'll be judged by the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we talk a lot about compromise on the station. Uh, I'm on record of not originally voting for the, the city site as well. I mean, it's been a long, drawn-out process to get to this point in time. Uh, and <clears throat> less than a year ago, when I ran for this office, again, we talked, to, uh, we knocked on doors, talked to constituents, and I, I expressed my deep concern the fact that it's not a, an $8 million station, it's not a $13 million station. Keep in mind, we had to buy the land from ourselves, from the county again. So we need to add that as well to the taxpayer. So I, I am not satisfied with the location. I think there's better uh, locations out there. But the important thing is, what I told my voters is, that this has to get built. Uh, they deserve far more than they have right now. They deserved it 40 years ago, quite frankly, when you were on there, far more than they have. So I'm excited that it's being built. So it's a happy day for me that it's being built. I am, however, very disappointed, however. Um, Alderman Wongman stated his beliefs, his feeling. Uh, he is happy that it's being built. He's not happy, like I'm not happy about the location. I'm not happy about the cost, but I'm happy it's being built. He expressed his thoughts. And I don't think this council or the mayor, quite frankly, has a right to tell him his thoughts are incorrect. He's su supporting this, and he, and he you know, did a noble statement to say that he's been one for 40 years. So I think let's look back at the record, at the words he said, and he is right. It's not that us to judge at all, this body. We've talked about working together, working together to have a unified vision. And while we're going to disagree with him, that, that's part of disagreement, though, is we have to allow ourselves to be vocal, be open and not be afraid to get smacked down by the, the, the people on this body. It's not our job to do that. So it's a very sad day for me that the fact that some of us on this body just got attacked for stating their beliefs. And quite frankly, I don't think, I, I, th I think the comments were far less derogatory than the direction, the attacks towards him. Um, and I think if, this is one that if it was done in the public forum, we'd be gathering people out of order. So I'm, I'm shocked that this happened in this council today, and I hope that apologies can be extended to each other outside this body, and that we continue to work forward, um, and with respect and dignity for everybody in this body to disagree. Um, there are, have been big issues that I've disagreed with other members in this committee uh, on voting opposite sides of that, but hopefully everyone can see that we're still in this to work together to move the city forward. So please, next time I disagree with everybody, I hopefully I don't get the same response back. I hope for better. Thank you. Alderman Rinfleisch. Nobody was attacked, and nobody is punishing anybody for speaking. And the same respect that you're asking us to extend, I think you should extend to me and the Alderman that offered their opinion. That's all we're saying, OK? We have one more, Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Honor. This will be just a very quick statement. Um, I was just thinking about how we got to this point. And I think compromise is the best word we could use tonight because I could be wrong, but I believe I voted on the site eight times <laughs> and eight different times. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. OK, 948, we are Putting the resolution upon his passage, 922, accepting and filing, 922, the RO. Please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 949. Resolution number 80708 by Alderman Hanna, Born, Bout, Gisha, and Clayunas, authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing appropriations for a partial refund of a development agreement payment from Heartland Properties. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would put, upon, <coughs> put resolution 949 upon his passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. <laughs> there being none, please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clyunis, Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. and Vanderweel. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 950, resolution number 810708 by Alderman Hannah, Boren, Bout, Gisha, and Clyunis, authorizing a partial refund of an economic development agreement payment. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I would put resolution 950 upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 951, resolution number 820708. By Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establish estimated revenue and appropriation for funds raised from Friends of Sheboygan Sen Senior Center Incorporated for volunteer coordinator. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I put resolution 951 upon his passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Bauk, Gisha, Hanna. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. and Boren. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman President Hannes is in a roll here. 958, RC number 147 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. Establish appropriations totaling one million fifty in the tax incremental district number twelve construction fund for expenses relating to the Grand State Hotel project to be funded from the sale of land and a state trust fund loan of nine hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. President Hanno. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First I'd like to put RC nine fifty eight accept and adopt. And secondly, uh, place resolution fifty nine oh seven oh eight upon its passage. Second. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 959. RC number 148.0708 by finance recommending authorizing borrowing from the trust funds of the state of Wisconsin in the sum of $935,000 for the purpose of financing street paving, parking lot, and economic development in TID 12, and for no other purpose. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to <clears throat> place RC uh, 1480708, accept and adopt, and secondly, place resolution number 680708 upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 962, General Ordinance Number 240708 by Alderman Kittleson and Verhassel, repeating subsections of General Ordinance Number 10708, adopted on June 18, 2007, granting Richard A. Wilkins, his heirs, and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of North 13th Street and Michigan Avenue, located at 1301 Michigan Avenue in the city of Sheboygan for the purpose of maintaining a patio era. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Just that you said it's granting an encroachment on the corner there of North 13th and Michigan Avenue for the purpose of a patio area. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Attorney McLean. Yes, just to clarify, this is to repeal a, uh, an encroachment ordinance that was granted a couple meetings ago. We got uh, a letter from Mr. Wilkins, who owns the building. This was where Tejano's was going, and uh, the the tenant had requested the encroachments, uh, and the owner does not want the encroachments. The tenant's now out of the building, and the tenant doesn't want, or the owner doesn't want to pay for encroachments that he has no intent to use. Okay. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor. Rinfleisch, Ryan, Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law? Attorney McLean. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Document 1062 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will be referred to law and licensing. And 1063 is a communication from Sergeant Tushinsky requesting discussion and action on various issues with the cab companies. And that will be referred to law and licensing. Thank you, Attorney McLean. All of President Hanna, need a motion to convene in closed session? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make the motion to convene a closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.851E of Wisconsin statutes for the purchase, purpose of deliberating the purchasing of public property where bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, we have to call the roll. Please call the roll. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Skisha? Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Wangaman. 13 ayes. Motion carries. We will go into closed session. I would, uh, do we need Paulette in here? Or, uh, uh, Paulette, would you, would you please stay? Uh, yes, and Bill, would you please stay? Do we... Thank you.